Texas Government Code Chapter 551. Meetings call to order. Um, David Abundi is board member, also president, Mr. Tomas Oreste. Staff members present, uh, Mr. Ray Madrigal, superintendent of schools, Mr. Jerry Soto, executive director of operations, and Ms. Mila Perez, recorder. Um, we're on title two, citizens to be heard, 15 minute total, limit total, three minute maximum per speaker. Citizens are, are offered an opportunity to address the board without prior approval. The board, however, will not comment or engage in discussion. Presentations shall be informative only. No board action will be taken. The topics addressed shall be limited to those specifically included on the committee's agenda. Presentation shall not, let me read that one more time. The topics addressed shall be limited to those specifically included on the committee's agenda. Presentation shall not include statements which may be considered defamatory, inflammatory, and or threatening against a person or the district. And speakers shall not mention students' names unless they mean your own child. Nor address a complaint against a district employee or officer. Such complaints will be handled through the guidelines set out in district policy. At all other times, members of the public should not enter into any discussion or debate on matters being considered by the committee. First citizen, Ms. Josie Skelf. Good evening. Uh, I just wanted to thank Mr. Soto and Mr. Madrigal and anybody else who had input uh, our, for our uh, bond 2015 oversight meetings to immediately follow the building committee meeting. This allows us to know the information that is going to go to the full board before there is actually a board vote. It allows us to ask knowledgeable and important questions and have input we may that and any input we may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scouts. Moving on to Corina Salcido. Good afternoon, uh, board members, uh, building committee people, and uh, committee members and staff. Um, I'd like to first start for thanking everyone um, for providing trans uh, the presentations this afternoon um, with full information and transparency for all. And we like to thank everyone who is going to be involved in helping our schools, our elementaries, and of course Gillette, because it is strongly needed. I thank you for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Salcido. Mr. Victor Salcido. Good evening, board members. Mr. Madrigal, Mr. Soto. Good evening. Um, I'm just here just to make sure, I mean, you know, just to talk about Gillette, just to make sure that, you know, we are moving in the right track on that Gillette project. Uh, it is way overdue. You know, um, don't know what was the holdup on that one because we already had that contract like November, I think it was. You know, I was thinking we were already be breaking some kind of ground or something there. But, um, you know, communities out there talking is, when is this? construction gonna actually get started, you know. So I think once they start seeing some machine some machinery out there, you know, some stuff out there, um, they'll stay a little bit more quiet, but right now there's still, you know, what's going on with our projects, you know, questions as far as um Vesto and Gillette, well I just said, you know, really don't know when it's gonna get started, hopefully by the summer, you know, on them projects right there. But uh, I would like to see everything be moved forward. You know, let's not have no delays. There's plenty of delays already. So I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salcido. Ms. Gina Castaneda. Good afternoon. I am going to be putting some questions there because as a member of the bond oversight, I think we need to meet before a building committee so we don't have to stand up here and not get 
questions answered and then come back and then try to talk to whoever's willing to talk to us. I think we're putting the cart before the horse, so to speak, without having a bond oversight committee and then having it after you, you all are going to make recommendations because how can you all make recommendations without having to speak in with the community? Um, so that's my concern with having it the other way around like it's going to be today. Instead, it should be first have a, a bond committee meeting and then have the building committee because that way you know where we're standing with this. In that regard, I feel that there's no transparency. And I want to know what the holdup is on several of these projects. With that being said, and discussing with several, I feel that there's games being played here because y'all do not want to hear us not just the bond oversight committee but the community again i will tell you we went out there to vote so i'm going to use this phrase again we can make it or break it and that's not a threat if you can see each other's at the poll the next time you ask for a bond because that's what it's looking like and I'm just putting it out there we want answers and with that I have several answers that I know are not going to be 30 seconds told because in this email that I got that I did not attend the meeting Several other of us did not attend the meeting. So if you want transparency, y'all don't have it. Point blank. Because at least my answers are not going to be answered until after the fact. So when you ask for input, we're going to give you input. That's why I'm here. Let's let's go for it. Thank you, Ms. Casetta. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I, I, I want to apologize to everybody. I don't know why I did it, but I'm just supposed to be in the audience. I came over here thinking I'm supposed to be at a meeting. I'm supposed to be here as a citizen. So I'm sorry I interrupted the meeting. Are you sure? I was like, man, I don't know if I need to go talk to one of you that was legal what I did. Uh, I noticed you here. I was not. Is he on the committee? No, I'm not. Yeah. I was supposed to be in the audience, but I walked in and I automatically. It's okay, Mr. Monte. The board president has has the option of. Okay. You're okay. Just go ahead. <laughs> so sorry, everybody. I'm used to that. I apologize. It was just a reaction, and then I'm looking at Mr. Monte. Oh. Okay. 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 Okay my thought was I walked in, I said, okay, I'm supposed to be up there. So I am so sorry. It's okay. We're on item three, fall projects update, Mr. Soto or Mr. Soto. Yes, I'm gonna put this over to the phone for Good evening, um, I'm Jasmine Azima and Koi is going to be giving the presentation. We're trying to go as fast as possible. First set of projects are as part of the bond 2015 very short couple of minutes. Uh, just the graphic <coughs> part and really what um, it's involved uh, as far as the facilities about roughly 49,800 square feet about uh, give or take. Uh, <coughs> project budgets are on the screen. Uh, the next project, of course, a short look of it. The good news is that the district is receiving 1,276,812. On the screen, you have the design, build, cost summary. Somebody could turn off one of those license memorandums, please. It shows what the original cost was about 24 million. We've negotiated it down to 17,508 with the GMP. 
and today uh, we are bringing one million two seventy six eight hundred twelve dollars back. On the screen, it shows basically the timeline, and when the project finished last July for substantial completion, and after that it was purchased items that have been taken care of, and this is what the district will be receiving uh, back. And the change order has been already issued and is. Uh, sent to the superintendent's office for signature. So if there's any question, would you be glad to answer if not then? Just real quick, uh, percentages, are we 100% across all the projects? Yes, except the plat has not been done. Um, but other than that, as far as, as the far building. As anything else, district has not paid the 100% yet. Uh, at this point, district has paid 92% of the total cost of the contractor. But the plank is something that got to get resolved because that's the, that's going to allow the project to get closed. Mr. Soto, do you want to bring that up? As far as what direction we're going to get about the I believe there, there was some discussion on, on, on the plaque on if we, we keep it the same as, as uh, the previous ones that are, we go back to just a single, single. Uh, Mr. Chair, what I do want to let you know that I already discussed with Mr. Soto, the board director, so direction on the plaque, so uh, Blanche has them. And, uh, and uh, so Mr. Soto should be able to move forward with it. What I'll do is I'll bring it forward for, for the board to review. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's I, I, something that the superintendent is going to allow us to know, right? I, I shared that conversation with the board president. I gave him the different options, and he gave us a directive. Gave it to Ms. Uh, Diaz, and Ms. Diaz should, either Mila or Jerry should have that ready to go. And, uh, and again, we just received the, uh, we just recently have received, I don't well, somewhere in the district staff, I haven't got it to my level, but I, my understanding that uh, I should be getting uh, that uh, set of documents for us to sign, and we'll bring it forward to the full board for final approval on the final payment. Every contractor at the end of any final payment and retaining skills has to be board approved. Just go next step. What was the change order, and are we 100% complete, ready for payment? That's what's in question right now. Uh, I've uh, asked uh, our project manager to schedule a meeting with with Kuntz because there's some items that uh, I do have questions on on some change orders. Uh, they've agreed. They, they sent me an email, and they've asked if, if I have any questions on it. Uh, I forwarded it back to Ms. Azima, and uh, we were just talking about it before this meeting uh, that I still want to schedule a meeting because there are some items that uh, they're in question. That's why uh, Mr. Madrigal hasn't got that paperwork to sign over that change order, that, that 1.2. The, the change order was for how much? Th this is a change order that's coming back to the district, but the change orders that, that I have in question, uh, there was some, some work being done that I questioned on, and, and that's the hold up on that being signed, the 1.2. Coming back to us. Coming back to us. Okay. Can I get a copy of the change orders that you're requesting? Yes, please. Mr. Chair. That's all I have. Mr. 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 Uh, Mr. Soto, just to, just to get clear, clarified, the, the change order, is, not, is it going to affect the cost, or is it already budgeted for that cost? And that's why we had... Okay. If I may, Mr. Yes, Soto. yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, Mr. Monter, in the uh, procedure of design, build, or construction manager at risk, whether you get a saving, whether you get an add, it's called change order. It has to be certified by architect of the record, which in this case is RBK, the builder's principal call. District is receiving $1,276,812 back. In order to get that money reduced from their total guarantee maximum price, coming from 17 million down to 15 million 800, Mr. Madrigal has to authorize that so we can reduce that much money back from their total money. That money was never paid, never spent. It's just getting reducing their total cost from 17 million down to 15 million eight. And so it has to be authorized in writing to get it back. Otherwise, they have a contract for 17 million. Uh, Mr. Chair, I guess basically what I'm asking is, you, you said you have some, some stuff in question. Now, is that still part of the money that's going to get paid, or is that part of the savings 
that they're going to have are they going to have to pull that out of the savings no. that is, is already it's already supposed to have been done is where where i'm at there were some change orders if you want to be specific there were some change orders that that had a uh, security some some hardware uh-huh. and uh convergent and coons had met before the, the the construction of the building when they went into the building uh the hardware wasn't uh compatible, compatible. So they had to change the hardware, and they want to charge the district. So that is one thing that that's that I was that I'm. It can change that number. It can make it. It can make it more if we if we get it out of them. But those are some of the items that, that I'm disputing. Yes. So at the minimum, it's the one million two seventy six. Right. Uh, Mr. Chair, again, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Soto gave one example. There's just very very few. But there's a few that we don't agree with because, again, it should have been their scope of service. They should have known better. Had plenty of time to. We feel as a district that we shouldn't have to pay for that or something that quite didn't turn out the way we wanted it to at the end and then they had to come and make a modification or adjustment to it. We don't feel we should be held, we should have to pay for it. We feel that that should be part of it. So like Ms. Sima said, we have that buyout science gaming, but my conversation with Mr. Soto and with, with Jasmine is, is that we want to make sure that we come to agreement on these small changes because we want to go ahead and settle it and get it all done at one time. And I told Mr. Soto to meet with Jasmine and them to set up this appoint this meeting so we can clarify some of these things that they're asking us, to which we as staff did not approve. We didn't sign and say we wanted them done. All right. Any further questions on this one? And now moving on to item four, architect ranking for Caramel and Mesto. Mr. Soto. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, this is to let you know what has happened with the ranking for the architects who submitted uh, for the Carol Bell, Carol Bell and Festival uh, design projects. As you know, these campuses are slated as part of 2015 for renovation or replacement. Uh, the criteria that was used to evaluate this, the uh, information that each of the architectural firms turned in is on the screen. Uh, it's very standard what this district has done for many years in terms of looking at prior experience, looking at quality of work, looking at the reputation of the firm. Uh, looking at the overall uh, plan that they have and also the specific people that they would be assigning to work on your project. Uh, there was a ranking committee, the participants are on the screen, and included uh, two people from our firm and also representatives of um, district administration. Uh, there were a number of architects who applied out of that list of nine or so. Uh, the ones on the screen here are the top three ranked. Uh, the first rank uh, was RBK, who has done several projects recently in, the, in this district that we we're all aware of. The second was Garza Bomberger. The third was HKS, who was partnering with a local firm called Roby Architecture. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions, we'd be glad to uh, answer them. Mr. Odesta. Uh, in, in the past, we the ranking was done by the by Ms. Azima and uh, our superintendent and the building committee. When do we change this over? The last time we that I ranked the RFQs, we had each each uh, member of the, of the bond oversight committee of the of the building committee, and then our our Ms. Azima, and then along with our superintendent. So we're not going to make a recommendation on this. We don't get to see any of the qualifications of any of the, of the people that are applying. If, if I recall correctly, I, I think they still made the recommendation, but I think they gave us the, the packages for everybody so that we can look through it just to make sure that we feel comfortable with your... We didn't really change much with your recommendations. I mean, you guys are here. Did you want a copy of what they submitted? Yes. Is this? Okay. That was you the... Just yep. so that we can see through it, so you can feel comfortable that this is where we're moving forward with. But um, but no, typically the staff in the past, before, I know the last few years kind of been, we've been in a different world, but I know in the past when you were, when we, we were in the board prior, you know, they came to us and then we reviewed it and then we, we accepted the recommendation for the most part. Well, I think, Ms. Zima, you remember when we, I'm oh, sorry, Ms. Zima? Remember when, remember when we ranked all the architects, yourself, the superintendent, the building committee, it was Mr. Herrera, myself, 
and I met with the, the person that was on the board. And then we came to a consensus who the top three were, and then the board chose the five of them. I just wonder why we're doing it different. That's what. Mr. Chair, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, uh, again, I know Mr. Udessi has been on this board for a long time prior. I know the band halls, the field houses, the, the early college high school, the health science county building, band hall fields, those, uh, the fall project and all those, uh, we basically did it the same way we did this, uh, this board manager. That, that's what we've done the last, uh, since those projects. Prior to that, any other projects, I don't know how it went with, uh, like bond 2006, when the comprehensive with, with uh, when we had uh, uh, the other general contractor and, and several architects, because we it was a different, uh, we had an architect with someone for every different school. I don't know what that process was like, but I know since we built the Van Hallsville houses, the State Marty College High School, the Health Science University building, there's a format that we used. Okay. When we passed the last bond, the big bond, and, and I think you remember that. Um, well, we all ranked them. We took the, the, the Pappets home and we all ranked all of them. Uh, uh, Mr. Ressi, are you referring to the architects for about 2009? I don't know what you're uh, Mr. Uh, Chair? I know that that was not used for that. For the other thing that I may want to add. Hold on. Mr. Madrigal wants to address the that. Thing I wanted to, the thing I want to just add that this may help. The other thing is, since we've gone to the Bad Halls Field Houses and gone to these other uh, facilities, we've, using, we've used a different construction method that where we've had construction manager risk design built where the architect and the general contractor were were pretty much married and worked together. So that's that's one reason why we follow this format differently because it wasn't like competitive seal proposed where we went out and hired an architect first and then we hired an architect and then we went out and then hired a general contractor. These last have been different. That's why they've been handled like this. But uh, I'm not, I, I know that Mr. Resti has mentioned that, he is correct, there's some things that were done differently, but the last couple of projects, the last few years have been handled just like this. But all the major projects from when you were, uh, ex I know, again, Van Hall, Field Houses, uh, the fall projects, the priority projects, the fall projects, Dan Murray College High School, the Health Science Technology have been this format. This format, okay. Mr. Okay, Mr. Monty, do you have any questions on this? I, no, sir, no questions. I was just going to agree with Mr. Oresti. It, it was done differently. Uh, I used to be in the audience when when they would do the ranking in, in the past. The, I think that was before Mr. That was, that was Yeah, that was before Oscar, Mr. Madrigal. Oscar, yes, Oscar Betty's days, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's, it's been that back, far back. And that, that's who we're working with right now. RVK, you've been, I mean, you, Jerry, you, and you, Mr. Madrigal, I mean, you got guys. R RVK, They've done, they've done good work for us. They've, done, they've been a good architect. They responded. There were a couple of things that we asked them in a design build that we wanted done that they said, you know, they, they came back. I, I would feel different if they hadn't come back and, and, and corrected some things uh, that we wanted to. They, so, but they've done good work. So they've uh, been responsive they, to your... To, your, to, this, your... to this point, yes, they have. Okay. All right. But again, Mr. Soto <laughs> works with them a little closer than I do. Uh, I know... Uh, 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 Jasmine Engineering, was, they, since uh, she oversees our project, she works closely with them all the time. You may want to get also get some feedback from them too, just besides me. But Conrad and them, I don't, I have, I, I, I don't have anything negative to say about them uh, in any. Yeah, I don't have a problem with those guys, but I do have a problem with the second ranking. Weren't those those guys that did McCullum High School? Yes, Coots. Well, well, we've had several both. projects. We've had, we've had a couple of projects. Who was the one that was working on the, fa the facade and everything in the front? That was Coons. That was Coons? Oh, okay, sorry. My bad. I retract that comment or that statement. Uh, I, I would still like to get a copy of the, the RVQs that were submitted and also how they were ranked, mm -hmm. uh, who ranked the one first, so who, how each person voted on this. And what, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Resti, mm -hmm. if I may, what I'll do is I'll ask Mr. Soto to send that to every one of the board members. We'll send that. <laughs> right, if no further questions, moving on to item five, Gillette Foundation update, Mr. Soto. Just talking to our chair, Ms. Carillo, she had, she had proposed if if, uh, if all be, we get five, three to five architects and they can present to the full board. Just wanted to let you guys know because she couldn't make it and she did tell me to, to go ahead and uh, so do you want them to, do you still want these three guys to present to us or do you, do you want to go with the recommendation? 
or choose one of these from the recommendation. Mr. Munson. Back, we're back to the architects. Yeah, I, I we could, we, Mr. Chair, we could. I, I, I know we kind of did away with that. We can still have a present. We've, we've had the present. Yeah. We've had the present in the past, but we didn't have a present to, for us to decide if how they were going to rank out in the last few projects. Now, I'm not questioning that. I'm, I'm, Mr. Desta, I know he's been on the board a lot longer, he, and he probably, I'm sure, Kerry remembers the process in the past, but we can still have them present. And, Something small, and once, five minutes max. And every time we've hired an architect, they've also come back and present to show us what the plan of action, how they're going to go about it, what that facility is going to look like, things like that, we, before we approved it. But again, if you give us, if you want us, we can we can see what we can do, if that's what your choice is, or your preferred choice. Mr. Yeah, the, the process that we used was the, again, like I said earlier, the each individual building committee member ranked them individually they took the they took the packets home the superintendent did the ranking i believe uh miss azima did her ranking and then whoever was in, i guess it was you that did it at the time and then we would come back each with our top three to five i think something like that and then from there we would come up with the top three then we interview those three i, th I think that was and prior to mr madriga changed the process and those are the ones that we interviewed yeah. only those top three well, I feel comfortable with these guys. We can interview them on, just bring these three guys in, five minute maximum. Mr. Mancha, you yeah, okay with that? that? That sounds good to me. But again, we'll still provide all the information you requested. Okay. Well, sir, uh, so can I get a directive on how, how you want me to? Five minutes maximum, we'll bring no, these guys For the next project, because we're, we're getting CMAR for those two uh, elementaries. Mm -hmm. For, for the ranking purposes, uh, there's some no, bills I mean, are due this Tuesday. It's been the practice since Mr. Madrigal. I, I think I'm okay with that. That's the thing. We have to be consistent. We haven't been in that. That's been the problem. And I think it's worked well since since we moved, we moved to this method. Again, our current practice has been this, this practice right now has been what we how we handle things since we did construction manager risk contract and we did the ban hall, the field house, the the, the health science technology buildings, the early college high school, the field house, the, up, the upgrade to the, the upgrade to the training rooms, the softball field, all those were handled like this. Mr. Monte, you any put input on this? Uh, no, sir. It, it's it's fine with me. Any further comment, Mr. Okay. So I guess we'll just stick to what we've been doing, Mr. Soto. Okay. All right, moving on to Gillette Foundation update, Mr. Soto. And this has been a, you know, one of these projects that, as we we know, uh, the community knows that it's been has been kind of dragging for for over three years. Uh, Mrs. Zima, do you want to have some insight on on this Gillette project? We have a, a PowerPoint which we can show if you would like for us to show the PowerPoint. Just uh, put it what you would like to Uh, the, the Gillette project, to give you a status on that. Uh, I believe not everyone here is uh, familiar with the issues there, with the process that we've been going through with the current design. Project the drawings are 100% complete. I have the set of drawings here uh, tonight on the chair that the uh, engineer has completed. There are a number of alternates that are included in, the, in those drawings, uh, both reductive and ad alternates. Uh, in terms of the timeline, basically, uh, the timeline that we're presenting is starts at July the 8th of 15. Uh, the step one RFQ was issued on that day. Uh, July the 20th, the board approved, approved the qualifications of the CMAR companies uh, that had uh, turned in this last time. Uh, the board also uh, approved an increased scope for the project on July the 30th. Uh, August, uh, in August, there were uh, 
the step two process, because we're using a two-step selection process for the CMAR, uh, was issued to the uh, qualified vendors who were asked to try to provide a proposal, and those were on <coughs> September the 3rd of this year. Uh, the ranking for those uh, vendors who had um, turned in <coughs> their proposals was on September the 22nd. October the 30th is the date that Frank Lundy completed 100% construction drawings and submitted them to us and also to the district uh, for review. Uh, November the 16th uh, was the uh, CMAR uh, RFP ranking that, that was approved on that date by the board. And from that point forward, uh, the uh, first rank company was engaged uh, with the district. Uh, the uh, legal counsel was the designated point of contact for that uh, in negotiating with the first firm. Uh, the first meeting that we had all had <coughs> with the district, the attorney, ourselves, uh, and the first rank company was on January the 13th. Uh, the first rank company. Uh, had, there were several issues that came out of that meeting. Uh, the first one was that uh, they had stated in their proposal and their bid originally that they did not want to uh, have a modified contract. They wanted a straight AIA contract without any changes. Uh, they also, in the course of discussing um, their familiarity with the project, it disclosed for the first time that they had been involved prior to submitting their bid uh, with the architect, uh, rather the engineer of record, and had uh, reviewed the plans and, and submitted the cost estimate to him uh, in advance of uh, the September 3rd bid that they turned in. In fact, uh, the bids, the cost estimate that they came up with was 4.1 million, and that was the uh, cost estimate that was presented by Lindy Frankie uh, to the board on July the 30th of 15. Uh, what that basically does is that in our professional opinion, it created a conflict of interest for that firm. Um, and if, even though, um, even if they had wanted to accept a modified contract, uh, the conflict of interest that was created because of that interaction with the process and the movement uh, been uh, grounds for them to be disqualified. Uh, the um, First, uh, the second rate company uh, has been contacted in negotiations mm -hmm. since the cease with them, not by us, but by the attorney. Uh, and also the third rate company uh, has declined to, uh, in speaking to the attorney, to decline the project because they have gotten very busy and are no longer interested in this school work. Why did they decline? They declined because in, in the interim from the time that they, they submitted, they've gotten a lot more work are very busy and they uh, prefer to do other work that they have and are, are not uh, interested in doing school work at this time at least. Uh, that was what they said to the attorney and I understand. So Mr. Soto, where does that leave us now? <coughs> yes, sir. Um, you know, there was an idea proposed that, that we tied into our, you know, once we're done with all three of them to go ahead and try to tie it into our to Veston Carabao with with that uh, with that CMAR, but uh, our legal has uh, advised us not to, so that's why we're gonna have to go to the board and, and say what's our next step. I believe uh, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, uh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, either go out for a rebid, and or what was the second option, sir? In our discussions, it was to possibly include this in the package for the contract for the bidding of the Carabao. So we, what we're doing, staff is asking for recommendation from the building committee. If, if what, what you would like for us to do to move forward to try to get this project done. Again, the first time we had no one submit any bids for it. The second time we had these three. And uh, again, one did not agree. Two, and then three said, no thanks, but no thanks. So we're back down to what we started, of course, with the loss of the time in between. No, I like the idea of tying it in to these guys. I know you're talking to Mr. Soto, like good architect supplying. It seems like they're going to be good construction companies coming in. 
but uh, why couldn't we tie it to this to these projects again? Why do we have to kind of delineate between them? Somebody can answer that for me. I'll be a little bit more clear, uh, Mr. Wilson. I, <clears throat> I believe it, it's when we first proposed it where we tied in after. You, oh, you're saying tying it in black now. Of yes, the sir. Yes. And then providing this contract to the like change one that's awarded, like the change award. Um, I, I can advise you in, in possession of guard because I don't want to give my advice about possession. But I, I would I advise to process it that you could either provide it to all the contractors that bid, give them all the opportunity to do this big project, or you could just come back out. Uh, I got one question. If we include it, it doesn't guarantee that they'll accept it? Or do they put it? If, in other words, we already have something out the market right now. It's so if we add it to it, if we add it to it, and it's Wednesday, well then there's a chance we may lose some of those people. That's my thinking. But, or do we just go out and rebid it? Is my question. Because I know that, that you know, contractors get something at last minute. And like you shared, rather be honest up front and let them know what to get themselves into and try to throw it in there to last minute. But then we may we may have people that because uh, we had a good selection of from a good pool of, of from, from uh, we had Zachary to we had some good pool of general contractors that are there that are interested in projects. We had about eight you know, really big people that put it out there all of a sudden adding that to it. We may not get the same interest. So again, our two options are. Again, go out and bid him again. That's, out, that's one option. Or, uh, again, if we add it, we just need to understand that we add it, the, the pool of general contractors may not be the same level of pool we have. But haven't we done that in the past where we added projects to, to certain contracts? We added projects, but Woody, again, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the difference. The difference is when we had money left over, then we added the projects. But this has been a known project on the market for over a year, where we set it out for bid. So everybody knows that we, we, we got that we have an engineer that's that's put some that's done some evaluation for scope of work, and then we had no interest. Then we sent it out again. So it's not it's not new information or new project. It it is it is it's projects that we've been advertising for a number of months. So that is the difference. And. From my conversation is that again you need to you need to go rebid it or add it to them now, and if we just know that we add it now, we don't have the selection of general contractors. We have a chance of having two projects, two projects, the two schools, and the Gillette fall behind. So, Mr. Wilson, are, are you? At, I, I still feel that we can add it. So, do you feel that it's we can't legally do that, or do you just have reservations? So is that a concern, or is legally we're not allowed to do that? There's a difference. Yeah, well, yes, concern legally, yes. I'm concerned legally about the uh, adding to a contract that's going to be able to contract without putting it back out to the other contracts allowed in the building. We also did on this one. Mr. Chair, I think also we're going to run across it because it's more of a, I guess, of a higher risk repair versus new construction, we may lose people that are going to want to bid on this. So, uh, would you agree with that, Ms. Azima? Yes. Yes. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Again, uh, just to know that, uh, again, we can go out and rebid, and we may have, or if we go the other option, they may rebid. take it, they may not. And those if we're getting options. good people here, we need to be able to tie it into some of these constru construction companies. Well, that's what my thoughts. Okay. Again, if we've already gone out twice, the first three fall, fall apart for whatever reason. We had three more fall apart for whatever reason. And now we got good people wanting to bid on the new construction. Tying it in, we could lose those people. So I think we need to keep it separate and try to find a way to get this thing done once and for all. 
and, and with that being said, I got a question about the the, al the alternates here. Uh, you have two deductive alternates. I don't know where those, how those came about or how the, the added alternates came about. How, how did those come up, uh, about, Mr. Zeman? That is for us. That is for us. Uh, the deductive alternates are the ones that are used in Is that, was that your concern, Mr. S I know Mr. Soltai mentioned about a concern way back then. Yeah, that was a, that that's piece. the one you brought up. Okay. Yeah. And the the first one, I, I mean, just I don't know whether were they even there yet, but just as far as the first one, um, I don't think I want to take away from, from the facade of the, of the of the building by putting stucco instead of brick. The second one, that's, that's that may just come to be automatically once they get in there, and they don't have to we don't have to put the fans. That may be able to cover the number four. I don't know if, how much of it, but maybe at least a portion of it. Uh, but as far as going in, uh, the, the the irrigation between the buildings, wasn't that already part of the initial bid? Aren't we doing that already? Well, we're just trying to say, in other words, we're trying to identify these as a different packages of design, and then you decide when the process comes in what you want to take or not take. None of these. In other words, you have two design sets. One set is basically the base plan. For example, the brick is the base plan. If they go stucco, it would be so much credit back to you if you decide to go that direction, right. which is what you did on your pre-K. Pre-K is a stucco, it's not brick. The same thing applies for the force fan versus natural ventilation. It's just that you see the cost and you decide if you want to exercise your options. But the, the, the full irrigation, we're not we're not doing full irrigation right now. We're just no. lifting the the soil to where it needs to be. No, I apologize for interjecting. What that is is to just get the design because you're not paying for the design. When the whole thing gets done as a full irrigation, you decide because currently you don't have a full blown system. You have some, but it's not full blown. So we just took advantage of the design team to give you the design. You okay. So we're not going to, we can't really pretty much choose any of this until we get further right. into it. Right. Okay. Right. And Thank it you. would require approval of, 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 of the board. Right. No decisions can be made by the board for the board. No way. Just have some, have different options for us for the next board meeting for us to decide uh, what if you can. We can. Um, uh, research with how, how, what, whatever that means yes. to see if you if you can make what we're asking because we've kind of done it in the past. I know you I know you have reservations, but do whatever uh, research necessary. Take it off. Yes, sir. I will. Okay. So for the next meeting, then come back with some options. Thank you. If you can just yes. get it to the to the full, full board before, before Okay, the that'll work. All right. Yes. All right, moving on to security. There's a presentation for security.
प्रोजेक्ट अपडेट Well, the point now, Mr. Bundis, <clears throat> on the clarification for Gillette, do you want to by, by this board meeting? Yes. Okay. Yes, we need to step, like we need to move forward. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Okay. The next one is a security. Is there a security project update? Yes. Sir. Okay. No percentages is pretty much. I think that's pretty understandable for everybody. How much, how far along we are in the projects. Any questions, Mr. Mansur, Mr. Torres? I think that pretty much. As long as the elementary and the middle schools, I mean, yeah. I know we're getting to that. But those were two important things I know we had asked well, we as have as a board. Last part no, I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried about Mr. Salt. I was more worried about the kids. <laughs> Me too. All right. Next project is uh, UHS Clinic at Collier. So what percent is it done? I'm sorry, what percent is done? It's finished. Okay. Yes. That's okay. Just okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the chair decided the agenda, and she wanted all projects that were. Comments. The time is 5:49, and this meeting is adjourned.